I'd like to take you back down memory lane with me and watch this Central Park Interurban coming out of the depot, the uh, Carroll Street Depot. Now that must be a Burnaby Lake, pardon me, where the Central Park's gonna follow him right out. Uh, this film was made 40 years ago, and uh, the commentary is made in 1990, 40 years later, so we're gonna have to do a little bit of comparison here. That's the Burnaby Lake, just come over the viaduct uh, on Hastings Street, over the Great Northern Railway tracks. Now he's cutting into the S-curve on Hastings Street. He's coming, uh, comes up to the switch at Clark Drive, which was an electric switch. The motorman had to take it pretty careful around there because the switch threw right in front of the car. And if he was going too fast, he'd be headed up the wrong way. He's turning on to Clark Drive now. Now he's heading across Clark Drive towards Venables. Now he's coming up, Venables, just about to Commercial Drive, where it'll, Little Italy is now. A real sharp curve around that uh, onto uh, Commercial Drive. Now there's a two-car Central Park train with the Burnaby Lake behind them. The Burnaby Lake will stop here at 6th Avenue and the conductor's got to get out and throw the switch to take the crossover and the Burnaby Lake line can start on his own right away after leaving Commercial Drive. The conductor's got to go and register in the booth and call out the number of the meat that come in on the opposing train which he passed somewhere on the city street. That's a little booth there where the conductor goes in to register. You'll notice the Central Park train going down Commercial Drive. A couple of the big Chilliwack cars are gonna show up here in a second. There they go. Now we're on our way. The Burnaby Lake line is on his own little right of way now. He has to shoot back from 6th Avenue to almost 1st Avenue. There's several little street crossings here. One more short block and we're at Victoria uh, Victoria Drive where the tracks cross and go up the steep grade. That house you see there is still there with a brand new one built right on the right of way. Now he's climbing the hill up towards Lakeview. There was no station at Lakeview, just a platform at the top of the hill. That was a real steep grade, and we used to have a three-car train go up there in the rush hour every day, and boy, you'd, uh, you could walk faster than you could climb the hill. Now we can see the power house at Nanaimo Road there in the distance. And this is actually now the alley of First Avenue. Now we're veering across in the angle now, uh, well, he's coming up from Vancouver. They just reversed the uh, scene here. He's coming from Vancouver now up to First Avenue, or up to Nanaimo Street at First Avenue. Now he veers over and goes down the center of First Avenue. If you drive along there today, you'll see there's grass all the way down the middle of the road. And that's where the interurban line was, right on the top of the grass. That's First Avenue, the way it was 40 years ago, about 1950, 51. That's Slocan Street Station. It wasn't. A, it was just a platform there. Oh, he's coming up to uh, Renfrew Street. There's the station ahead at Renfrew.
This was all single track here, and uh, half the time the stations were on the wrong side, and the motorman couldn't, he had to guess at where the door was, but he got pretty slick at it after a while. Now he's heading going down the hill, down towards Windermere Station. Quite a steep hill. You had to really keep a hold of it, or you'd go whistling right by the station. Down the bottom there, there's a flat spot where the uh, train will sit without any air on it. It's perfectly level for, you know, about a couple hundred feet. And then the next one is Cassiar Station. You can see the barricade on the road. That's as far as the, the road went. And in the uh, springtime, the caterpillars would get in there, and man, you would go sliding down there right around the curve and have to back all the way up because them greasy caterpillars and stink. Ooh, and they got on cooking on the wheel, hot wheels. We come around the bend here now, and there's Horn Payne substation. A shot coming from Vancouver to Boundary Road, coming into Horn Payne Station. Just beyond Horn Payne Station is a, where we have a meet, a siding from the, the meets the fellow come from Sapperton. It's a one end siding, you have to pull in and back out. This is the fellow from Sapperton, he holds the main line. The fellow from Vancouver heads into the siding. The little tracks on the side are just spur tracks going into the Horn Payne substation where we took the transformers in. I worked on a freight engine one day and we shoved a big heavy transformer in there. It was so heavy they had to build a spur through Dominion Bridge Company to get the transformer to us. Now well, we're heading out towards Gilmore Station, just about ready to go across the Lougheed Highway. That's the Lougheed Highway and the wigwag going. In the second, you should be able to see the spur they built through Dominion Bridge. There it is. That's the one they built just to bring that big heavy transformer in, in a big depressed low bed flat. Now that's Gilmore Avenue. He goes by Gilmer and takes a big sweeping curve and parallels the Great Northern Main Line right down to Queen Station, which is Willingdon now, Willingdon Avenue. Years and years ago, it was called Queen's Avenue. That's why Queen Station is still no, was still known as Queen's. In the far distance is the old par house, the old substation of Horn Payne. That signal is the uh, smashboard uh, signal allowing the Burnaby Lake line to cross over the Great Northern. It's the automatic uh, signals there so that the, if there's a Great Northern coming, you, you have to wait for it until he clears. There, he just went across the Great Northern tracks. Across the flats now, over Still Creek to Murren Station, which was the foot of Royal Oak Avenue. There's the trestle over Still Creek. Murren Station just ahead. That's Murren, foot of... Now you'd be right along the side of the 401 freeway right here. This is Douglas Road. Now at Douglas Road, the road goes over the top uh, of the freeway. In the rush hour, we used to have two cars from here to Vancouver. They would cut one car off here at Douglas and the brakeman would stay with it the conductor and motorman would take the single car to their meet at Hill. And the fellow they met at Hill would couple on to the single car we left at uh, Douglas Road and they'd continue.